What is going on guys? Dayton here, aka Dr. Our Flower, and I am back from my hiatus. So I've been away for a little while here, um, but I am getting back into things. I've been working on a few projects, working on a few documentaries. Uh, one I'm going to be releasing here right away. So a couple reasons why I've been on a hiatus for a little bit. Uh, got a new career, so I had to really focus on that for a while. And I got some pretty bad medical news for a family member, and it's kind of... Uh, Took a toll on my creativity so had to take a little bit of a break but uh, just letting you guys know everything's okay uh, we're getting back into things so for you guys out there who are starting to worry a little bit message me I am doing okay and uh, trying to get back in the swing of things give me a little time but uh, we'll get back into making some content for you guys before we get into things if you can smash the like button and leave a comment down in the comment section below if you got a question if you want to uh, get in with the autoflower question and answer videos Put a question down below and uh, it can be featured in the next video. Also before we get into things, if you're interested in tie-dye shirts, highly recommend checking out Peelicious Tie-Dye. Peelicious Tie-Dye is a friend of the channel and makes some pretty awesome uh, handmade tie-dye, so definitely check it out. So with that out of the way, let's get into some autoflower question and answers. So LL Cool Dawn asks, how can you tell when a plant is stunted? So that's a really good question and it's something I learned over time. So I learned how to grow autoflowers from forums. Forums would be uh, people just posting pictures of their grows and one of the really helpful things about learning that way was people would post uh, like day one, day three, day five and so on pics of their autoflower grows. You would see that there's a growth pattern that most autoflowers follow. So you can start seeing that like 10 days old they should look a certain way with a certain amount of leaves. 14 days old they should have more leaves look a certain way. Day 18, they should start flowering, uh, producing pistils and stuff, be at a certain height. So obviously this is pretty good indicators when you're first getting into autoflowers and you don't know this kind of stuff. So it is definitely a good thing to go research um, because, for example, someone I work with was telling me he was growing autoflowers. And he told me he had his autoflowers in uh, Dixie cups, small cups, and they're only this tall and they're a month and a half old. So right off the bat there, I can tell from just his information he gave me that they are stunted, uh, they are root bound, and they should be much bigger at a month and a half because autoflowers compared to photo periods, they got a set time schedule. So you definitely want to see them uh, growing at a certain rate, and if they're growing much slower than what the average rate of growth is, then you can tell something's stunted, something's up. But just finding out that your plant is actually stunted is the first step of the process. And I highly recommend you do a little research. You can find quite a few uh, grow journals of autoflower grows on forums, and a lot of them are, are dated. But after going over multiple grows like this, um, you'll start building a picture in your mind what the autos should look like at uh, that age of growth or that stage of growth. So Raul asks, I'm on week uh, five or six with my autoflowers at 12 and 12 light. Will my plants be affected if I switch to 18 hours of light? They'll actually do better and I highly recommend if you haven't, definitely do that. For autoflowers, you can grow them at 12 hours of light and 12 hours darkness. Like you could have them with a uh, flowering photo period if you really wanted to. Will you grow as much bud as you could if it was on 18 hours of light? I don't believe so. So you will have a decreased yield. Will it be a large amount? I'm not too sure, but you definitely will have less than what you could have with growing with the proper uh, light schedule. Because autoflowers, it's all about giving them the optimal growing area with light, soil, watering, food, everything. The more optimal environment you give the plant, the better your harvest will be. Johnny West asks if he can add mirrors to his grow room and I would highly recommend do not add mirrors or tinfoil to your grow room because these can uh, actually burn your plants the reflections from the light is actually too much I believe uh, you don't want that you want diffuse reflection I would always recommend just getting a grow tent or using a panda film mylar or whatever um, that's usually your best bet or have a full room just dedicated and painted white that's also really good Cheryl asks, is 48 hours of darkness necessary for autoflowers? No, it is not necessary at all. I've never really noticed much of a difference. I've done this in the past. 
Now the only time I actually do this is if I'm not totally wanting to harvest right away. So for me, if the plant is done, ready to go, I'll either chop it right away or if I'm not in the mood to chop it, I will sometimes leave it for a day or two days. Um, the only reason for me is I just don't want to chop it down right now and do all the harvesting. So that's my take on that. Some people are really strict with that and they always do it. Me, I try to keep things simple and uh, less complicated and less stressful. Moderator asks, if you already added nutrients to the soil, and I'm guessing they're talking about um, organic soil amendments, uh, do you need to add nutrients to your water when you're watering them? So if you already added your organic nutrients to your soil, then that's good. All you need to do is water at the right pH, and that's it. And depending on the nutrients you're using, you may need to amend the soil about a month or a month and a half down the road, uh, add some more nutrients on top, and uh, or mix it into the top. So top dressing feeding seems to be the only time you actually feed extra when you're using that kind of setup. Here's an interesting question. Uh, Legacy asks, uh, I got some sherb cake seeds. Uh, how do I determine if my sherb cake is an autoflower? So if you got, like, let's say you got some seeds and you got some mystery seeds and you are really not sure what it is. It could be anything. So you plant them, the plant's going, you're around day, I would say 18 to 21, three weeks. If you start seeing flowers form, either male pollen sacs or the white pistil flower hairs, and if it's showing whether it's male or female around that time of growth with 18 hours of light, then technically it should be an autoflower um, because that's when autoflowers would flower and if it starts flowering more and more and more, then you can definitely tell it's an autoflower. If the plant just keeps getting bigger after 21 days and you don't see any male pollen sacs or female pistil white hairs coming out, then you can pretty much determine that's a photo period and it's not gonna flower until you put it into flower. But also some photo periods can also sex themselves after you know a long time of being into veg I've seen that too so if it's like two months into veg and then you see some white hairs coming out I would just think that the photo period plant is sexing itself uh, not actually going into flower sometimes that happens when they reach a certain age in veg so autoflowers you can tell by around 18 days to 21 days if it's an autoflower and I'll end on this one whiskey rebel says autoflower plants are easy bake oven of growing they are for children so i would partially agree with this and also strongly disagree at the same time because autoflowers will test you i've always said that autoflowers can be grown by pretty much anyone with any kind of setup you could put an autoflower by a windowsill and technically you will grow a bud <laughs> i say a bud because uh, they might grow really short and tiny and stuff, but you will technically grow a plant. Um, same with just throwing one under a light or maybe in a closet with a light. And you don't even actually have a, a dark room setup where you can block out all the light. You don't need that. Technically, it is much easier to grow autoflowers, but to grow a good autoflower, you got to have some pretty damn good skills. They will teach you how to read your plants really well. That is definitely one of the benefits I found. Like I've, it seems much easier for me to read plants when I first started growing autoflowers because you had to read them, know what's going on to try to mitigate any issues. But to have some of those really amazing autoflower grows, you got to have some skills and autoflowers will help you get those skills. So that is why I recommend them. Some say they're hassle, some say this and that. I say it's a learning experience and you will learn so much growing these plants and it'll help you along the way. So that's it for this video guys, hope you like it. Sorry again for the hiatus, I am trying to get back into things, uh, get back into my creative roots. Also a reminder, I got a new documentary coming out in a couple days. It is probably my craziest adventure so far on this channel. So definitely check out that stony adventure once that comes out. And uh, until next time guys, peace out and we'll catch you guys later.